Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to Oropo, Battle for the Elia Cube. So, it's 2023, and we are reacting to Wakfu content. Uh, for those who don't know, I actually reacted to all three seasons so far of Wakfu, as well as OVAs and stuff, um, on my old channel. In fact, it was probably one of the bigger uh, shows that I reacted to in terms of viewership and whatnot. A lot of my following, a lot of my fan base was kind of built around it, surprisingly enough. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the people who are still here to this day either came from it or are the ones who suggested that I check it out. Uh, for those who don't know, Wakfu is a French cartoon. It is based on an MMO video game and is set in the world of 12. It is a fictional fantasy world uh, that also features a more child-friendly series with Dofus, which I also tried to react to a couple times but just couldn't get into. It was, it was a little too silly for my tastes, personally. And I, I can get into silly, but it's not what I wanted from this kind of, like, you know, world, I guess you could say. It wasn't bad, just didn't really hook me in. Um, and I guess there's going to be a new series coming in the future from the same uh, studio on Kama. Uh, that also takes place in this world. I can't remember what it's called right now. Uh, but the story follows the Brotherhood of Tofu, a group of friends and even, to a degree, family who have to, you know, go on these journeys, fight these evils, learn more about themselves. Um, and Oropo is both not and is one of them. Um, keep in mind... The third season came out in, like, 2017, so I'm going off of memories from back then. Um, I don't think I've reacted to Wakfu since I came out. <laughs> That's because I came out in 2017, in November of 2017. So, that's kind of wild to think about, you know? Um, that... I don't think I've reacted to this series since I came out as trans. Um, but just as a warning, if you have not seen seasons one through three of Wakfu, and most notably season three, this is gonna touch on things from that. This is a uh, th this special is basically a spin-off of stuff from season three. So if you don't want spoilers, uh, seasons one through three should still be on Netflix in the US. Uh, they were last time I checked like a couple weeks ago. Um, they should still be there. So I would suggest going and checking them out. Um, and I would definitely suggest watching them in the French because while the third season, the dub gets drastically better the first two seasons dub is not good it's just not um the third season changes a lot of the voices pretty much all the voices i think and uh gets some like really big names in it and everything uh like cherami lay and todd habercorn and whatnot but the first two seasons i think are like um, newer voice actors at the time who just didn't uh, didn't really know how to get certain inflections and, and whatnot right. It just didn't work. It wasn't good. But I would suggest watching the French anyway because that's what I watch it in. And that's what we're watching in today because this is not out in any other language right now. It is only available in French, but we do have English subtitles. Um, so... To go into the spoiler stuff, though, so if you have not seen Season 3, I would suggest, again, going to watch those and then coming back to this. 
because uh, we're going to begin talking about like what I remember, at least, in terms of spoilers for Season 3 in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so in Season 3 of Wakfu, um, or Oropo is the main villain. And he's, if I remember right, basically an alternate version of the main character, Yugo. Um, there's time travel shenanigans and, and really wild shit, but it, it basically comes down to him being like an alternate version of Yugo. Just evil. And because of this, he ends up being quite powerful himself. Now, this special is all about Oropo. And I assume it's going to go more into his specific backstory and everything. And it's going to discuss, I guess, more than what Season 3 actually did. Um, and I I'm kind of interested to find out how all of that goes down. Because Season 3 didn't explain a lot. And, and I know that there's a lot of people uh, who aren't the biggest fans of Oropo in Season 3 um, because it didn't explain a lot. And I think part of the reason for that was that Season 3 basically had to be crowdfunded and didn't really have good budgets and everything. They, they had uh, a lot less episodes to work with and just couldn't do as much as they wanted. Um, season four, I think, is going to be coming out next year. And season four, from what I can tell, is basically the second half of season three. It, it, it's, it, it, it's more than likely going to fill out a bunch of stuff and to actually conclude from the cliffhanger we left off on. Um, but yeah, this, this special is clearly made to, uh, fill in some gaps. Uh, and I'm, I'm definitely interested to see what they do. Now, like I said, it's been since like 2017 since I've watched this. I, I haven't really rewatched much of it since. I've rewatched some of the earlier stuff, but not really season three. Uh, because... Most reactors have not reacted to this. And the few that I've seen who have are not usually reactors that I'm, I, I, I get into personally. Um, so it's like, I just wish more people would watch this. You know what I mean? I wish more people would give it a chance. Um, I would love to see Sort of Stupid react to this. That would be great. Probably won't happen, but I would love to see it. Um, but yeah. This, this is going to be interesting going in with just a basic remembrance of the things that happened. Um, just as a quick recap of things, um, Hugo and Amalia had kind of this falling out in their relationship. And I think it was kind of mended by the end. But it took like until the very end. And I'm not even 100% sure if it was really fully mended. Um, we have um, Tristapin and Ava and their kids involved in this all. Um, Adamai became a bad guy, but I believe got redeemed. We have uh, Rule there who went through his own little arc in, in the story with, uh, about his wife and everything. Uh, I, I believe it was his wife. Um, a, lot of, a lot of interesting story beats. A lot of interesting enemies to take on, including one guy who I think was obsessed with panties, weirdly. Like, in a really fucking weird way. Um, and... A lot of 
great fights, a lot of great uh, moments, uh, and some really, really cool villain characters too, like uh, Lady Echo and Toxine. Um, honestly, both of them were a lot more interesting than Oropo. <laughs> And, and I'm not one of the people who hate on Oropo. I, I think Oropo was fine. He's no Kilby or Knox, but he was fine. Uh, Kilby and Knox being previous main villains from Wakfu. Um, yeah, it's just... I'm interested to learn more about him, though. Maybe maybe this special will turn, will turn things around for me and make him m more interesting than I thought. Um, because they expanded on Knox a bit, and that made him even more interesting. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to get to this. Uh, we're gonna just do so, and hope for the best that this ends up being pretty, pretty damn good. Um, so, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after fades black and then fades back in, everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the special. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So I looked up some stuff in between to kind of reacquaint myself with things because it's been so long. And yeah, so... Just as a reminder here, um, Oropo and the entire Eliotrope race are clones of Yugo that were basically created during Yugo's battle with Ogrest. And they gain Yugo's memories, powers, just pr pretty much everything as time progresses. And we find out in Season 3 that Oropo is the last of the Eliotropes. That everything prior in the series has been him pulling the strings behind the scenes. And it's all been his big plan to kill the gods and replace them with their demigod children. To make the world, in his eyes, a better place. Um, he's one of those villains who has some valid points, who genuinely believes he's trying to do the right thing for the good of all, but is still twisted and evil, nonetheless. He's kind of driven to insanity by his connection to Yugo, and is while believing that he's doing the right thing, is enacting plans and actions of evil intent, even if he doesn't fully realize it. Now, since we know that all the other Eliotropes died out prior to the events of Season 3, this is literally showing how some of that, ha well, uh, probably a lot of that happened. Uh, this group here that we see is probably, at this point in time, some of the last Eliotropes. Um, and, and there's a few things to take into account here. One, Yugo already exists. Yugo is already born and everything. Because he's he's mentioned multiple times by Grugel and Chibi, and it's mentioned how how Oropo and them have his whack foo and everything, his looks, his whack foo, all of that. So this is after Yugo's birth that this takes place, but before the events of season three, and I would wager. Unless I'm forgetting something, this is probably before the events of Season 1. Because... Because Grugel only looks how he kind of does 
in season one at the very end here with the like white eyes and everything um in prior to that he looks a lot younger and a lot different so i'm thinking that this was kind of like a backstory to everything This, like, preceded the events of the entire series. Which is interesting. And it, I don't think it explain. It, it doesn't really explain here how Oropo returned yet. Because if he pulled the strings behind everything prior to this, that means, and if this is prior to the events of the series, that means he would have had to have returned. His soul and body would have had to be reunited. And because of that, like, he would have started putting everything back into motion. But for his soul and body to re be reunited, the e they would have to have the Ely Cube. And I think they did, didn't they? I know they had it by the end of the of the third season because, uh, I mean, that's how Echo and uh, Oropo died. The Ilya Cube exploded and destroyed them. <laughs> um, but yeah. Apparently, um, according to what the, the wiki here says, apparently, uh, the first episode of season four is going to uh, is going to be about Oropo. So maybe it's going to show like uh, how he, I guess, got came back from this and all. Um, that's the only thing I can really think of. Um, because it doesn't really like say here. Yeah, it says the first episode of season four will focus on Oropo. Um, so I'm really interested to see what they do with this. Uh, let me check something while I'm at it, though. Let me check for uh, Chibi's profile here. Chibi is the Eliotrope twin of Google, yep. That's what it was. Yeah, he was reborn in in the current in 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 Wakfu in the main series. He was reborn as like a as like a little baby, basically. That's what it was. Yeah. I I knew Chibi was in there. I, I just, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, and I'm looking at the picture of Krugel here. He is a lot older in his main human form in the main series than what we see here. So, yeah. And yeah, Gru it looks like Grugel was, had to be reborn and all, too. Because he returned to his Dofus as well. Along with Chibi. And baby Grugel is just like in his dragon form and all. Yeah, it, again, it's been so long. It, it's like I have to get reminded of kind of everything. Um... Which happens. It, it, it's a thing. But yeah, um, this special, let's talk more about it though, um, very much lived up to its name. Um, battle for the Elia Cube. This entire special was just this battle. Um, the Elia tropes led by um, Oropo invade uh, Rugal's island. And have a fight with Grugel and eventually Chibi. It results in Chibi's uh, death. 
as we currently see it, as we, his current life, and it, he would be reborn in the Dofu Slater, um, as well as the deaths of multiple of the Eliotropes. So we get to see a lot of the emotional core of Oropo in this. It shows how much he cares for his people and how much these deaths actively hurt him. We also get to see just some really cool action scenes, of course, with these uh, fights. But that's mostly what this is, just the fights and the deaths that impact these characters in the future, in the main series. Not much else really happens in this. There's not really a lot of other character development or story development. It's just, it's, it's, it's a small addition to what we've already gotten. And honestly, you know, fair enough. I didn't expect this to be like the most detailed thing. Uh, I, I did think it was going to be more than this, but, um, I didn't think it was necessarily going to like be like a season's worth of lore just being dropped on us like that. No. I just, I'm surprised though that it is just the fight, <laughs> just the battle. But it was good. It, it, it was a good fight. It uh, had, had the different stages with each of the different uh, Eliotropes having different specialties and whatnot. Uh, you had Bullion, who was mostly focused with his strength. You have... Um, I can't remember all their names right now. The kid... Uh, Sid. Sid. Sid, who is speed and pretty much nothing else as we end up seeing, it's like, oh, he's fast, and that's fucking it. Um, then you have the other one, the masked one, who I don't remember the name of, uh, but they were, uh, they, they had, like, mind powers and lasers and shit, um, to the point where I, I was actually kind of thinking, like, are they a robot at first? But no, no, they were just an heliotrope with, that's just what their powers were. Uh, we get to see Oropo fight, uh, Echo does a little bit of fighting, um, but ends up getting burned and everything, and it's like, yeah, there's a lot to this. We get to see a couple others, but they end up leaving before things really start, uh, including the one who's killed in the end because he's a traitorous bitch. Um... But there is like there were two others who left as well, right? Let, let me go back and check. Uh, I'm gonna mute it obviously because I don't need copyright issues. Um, but let me let me bring this back up real quick. I believe there were two others who left like right as the battle was starting. Let me see here. Yeah. Oh, no, one, one of the two was the bitch who died at the end. But the other one was this uh, one who looked like they were wearing, like, some kind of, like, bird armor or something. Had, like, these big wings. Had, like, some black lines coming down from the eyes. Um, they never came back. So they, they must have, like, died at a later point or something. Um, maybe they helped uh, Echo bring Oropo back. Maybe that maybe that'll come into play in season four's first episode, since I guess that's going to focus on Oropo a little bit. Um Yeah, I, I I'm very interested to see where season four ends up going now. Um because obviously it's gotta continue off of where season three left off. But if the first episode's going to focus on Oropo, I'm interested to see what more they add to him at this point. Following it, there are a shit ton of birds outside. What the fuck? Who oh, got him in an Alfred Hitchcock movie? 
I'm sorry, I just got distracted. Like, there, there's an entire, like, flock of birds just flying right in our front yard. And it's like, oh my god, that's creepy. That is weirdly creepy. They're just, like, little nothing of nothing birds. But what the hell? Uh, okay. Um, sure. Uh, hey, anyway. Um, so the first episode is going to be focused on that, like, post his death. I'm, I'm interested to see what they add in. I, I feel like it's got to be, like, a follow-up to this. Because they release this as a lead-up to season four. So I'm thinking, because of that, the first episode, which, again, is, apparently is going to be focused on Arapo, has to cover that, right? That Like, that's got to be what the lead-up is to. I guess we're gonna have to find out. Um, but obviously I will be reacting to season four when it does come out. Um, I wish I still had copies of all seasons one through three. Um, unfortunately, those were lost to time and everything. Um, I think I might still have like one thing saved. I think I ended up finding one thing here. Yeah, I have I have the first episode, the first part of the first episode of season three still saved. I, I think it was like split into parts because of like, I think there were like time constraints or something on YouTube at that point. There's something, there, there's some reason it's, it was split into parts. But I have like part one of season three, episode one uh, still saved, but that's it. That's it. Um... And I'm not going to, like, re-react to it. Because I, I don't tend to do that. Um, but, yeah, it's like... I'll, I'll probably try to reacquaint myself at least a little bit, even if I just go through some synopsises before Season 4 eventually comes out. And when it does, we'll react to that. And hopefully, it ends up being really good. So, all of that being said, uh, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of, uh, for, bleh, 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 I can't speak. What did you think of Oropo Battle for the Elia Cube? Let me know your thoughts down below. And if there's anything I missed or anything that, like, you want to clarify for me, please feel free. Because, again, I haven't seen this stuff since, like, 2017, for the most part, outside of, like, some of the earlier episodes. So, there's a lot I probably don't remember. <laughs> So please feel free to, uh, if, if, if you feel the need to uh, clarify anything for me as well. Uh, but for now, thank you all so much for tuning in. I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.